Hey everyone, this is a video response to Exotic Class or Exotic Lass's video Growing Up Without a Father. And I thought I would share my experience about growing up without a father. Okay, to start off, my father left me three months before I was born, and my mother six months after I was born. So, I've lived with my grandparents since I was six months old, and, you know, my mom was only 15 at the time, and my dad, I think, was 18, 19, something like that, and my mom was living with her friend, Glenn, and... You know, she'd go out and party and everything, so my grandparents took me in, and they raised me, and, you know, back when I was old enough to walk and talk and to remember things, I know I stayed with my mom here and there, when she lived in a yellow apartment, yellow, 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 whatever you want to call it yellow apartment and I don't recall anything about my dad other than my mom said he was sent to prison my aunt said that she didn't want anything to do with me and my grandma said that you know he just ran off period so when I was old enough to remember, I think maybe five or six, or maybe a little bit older, I asked my grandparents if I could call them mom and dad. They said sure and asked why. And I said because I see all my friends, you know, they have mom and dad, you know, they're actual parents. And they go out to eat, you know, they go to the movies, the park, they do family things together. And, you know, I wanted to feel like they felt, it smile like they did, you know, feel like I was wanted or I belonged. And, you know, later on my mom had another girl when I was about maybe three or four, turning five, something like that. And then when I was nine, my mom had another little girl. And all three of us on my mom's side are from three different guys. And when I was 14, I remember I asked, you know, like, since I'm old enough, may I see my, you know, figure out who my dad is. So we went to social service and we, you know, did papers and stuff. And a few weeks later, but we had to go to the courthouse and this guy came through the door and he hugged me crying you know saying like I love you and I didn't know who the hell he was other than you know supposedly that's my father so we did the DNA swabs with the little the swab you know it's about yay big they stick it like through your mouth and like you know swab your cheek the cheek swab that's it and then, I think maybe a week, two weeks later, we got the DNA test back and he was my father. Even though my family already knew. And I was 14 at the time. And... I found out I had... Five brothers and one sister on my dad's side. And I stayed at his house maybe two or three times since then. I met my grandma on that side. Found out my grandpa died a year before, you know, when I was 13. And I met two of my uncles. And I met my stepmom. And a few of their friends. And, you know, everybody was shocked. You know, like, they didn't know who I was. You know, they didn't really talk to me or anything. And, you know, I... 
he has to pay child support, and so a little bit afterwards, I never went down there again, you know. And he called me, he was accusing my grandparents of not letting him see me or something like that, saying it was their fault, and, you know, since I lived with my grandparents, you know, I said, you know, fuck off. So I didn't talk to him for about a year. And then I started talking to him again and went down to his house a few more times. And, you know, then we stopped and he never came got me again. And a year went by. And still nothing from me. I called, you know, I wanted to come down, he never came got me. And then 2007. He got a divorce with his wife. He got with a you know, he, he got with a twenty one woman, got her pregnant. And then you know, now I have like six brothers and one sister on my dad's side. And on my mom's I've got two sisters, two step brothers and one stepsister. I lost an uncle and you know, to this very day, me and my dad have nothing in common. Other than he used to be in the magic when he was my age, and you know, I do, I like research it, and I read upon it, and I've even tried it a few times. And, I mean, he's a complete ass, he don't want nothing to do with me. He don't even want anything to do with his other six kids. Except for the new one. And now when I think about it, I've wasted 17 years wondering who my father was, you know, and I've wasted 17 years on hoping that him can do things for you know, as a family. I wasted 17 years of hopes and dreams, you know, there's not really much to say about him, other than it was hard growing up, you know. And people would always ask me if my dad was and I told them I didn't know. And same with my mom, because I resented my mom. And growing up I told myself I'd never turn out like my family. So I never drank or smoked until I was 16, no, 17. I smoked when I was 16 and drank when I was 17, once each. And, I mean, I'd never hit a woman. In every relationship I've been in, I've never hit a girl. I mean, yeah, I bottle my feelings up and my emotions and my anger and all that. I bottle it up. And, you know, I just don't want to put my family you know? This is so hard to talk about because I just had this, this whole thing I wanted to say about growing up without a father, and I never, I didn't actually think it was going to be this hard to talk about. So, I guess I'll just say, sometimes you're better off not knowing who he is, and if you eventually find out who he is, then, you know, don't waste your hopes and your dreams on it. And if you know who he is, but he's not in your life, then, I mean, I'm sorry. I just, I don't know, I just, I just wish I never knew. You know? And I know what he's like, and it's completely different from what I've heard of him. And I can't change him, but I can only hope for the best, you know, watch out for my little brothers and sister, and watch out for my sisters on my mom's side, 